So Joe, museum release wines, they're wines that the wine society buy young. We then mature them in the cellars and you as a buyer, I think, and all the other buyers then judge whether you think the wine's ready to drink. What do you think happens during that process to make the wine even more approachable than it is when, when it's young? To me, the, the beauty of that uh, time in bottle um, moves the wine from that early stage, which is all about the fruit, it's all about immediate expression. In some cases, you'll still be very aware of the oak. Mm. Um, and then the wine gradually goes through a variety of phases, developing complexity. Um, the tannins, particularly in the case of red wines, the tannins soften, so you get a much smoother glass of wine. The oak becomes integrated, so it doesn't stand out from the wine anymore. It all becomes wrapped up into those complex flavours. And you can get layers of flavour, length of flavour. Um, it's just a, a, a gentling of the wine, if you like, um, which I love. And, and watching that transition over a period of time too. And I know you're a keen collector. You, know, you love to sell our wines. What's been special for you? Well, I, yeah, I've put wines down from en primeur, in fact, and then aged them for five, ten years, whatever. And I, but I, but I love the way the wine society also has mature wines on its list that I, I buy and I know that have been kept in perfect storage conditions. And I love to see the different sort of layers of flavour that you get over a period of time. So I'll pull wines out that are, are sort of young, but I also like them with a, a lot of age and, and, and more mature. So you have those sort of forest floor notes and the mushroomy notes that you get on Pinot Noir and things like that. So this 2010, it's actually opening up in the glass already. Mm, um, it's just starting to show the real benefit of that time in bottle. Yeah. And it's, it's a really good example of a wine that we would have bought and offered en primeur. Mm. But at the time, we knew it was just the kind of wine we would need for the future. Yeah. Um, it's always been a, a great member's favourite anyway. So we yeah. bought quite heavily at the time. We did. But of course now, that's something we're doing more consistently. Yeah, we are. Um, so we're making a conscious decision. I think it's, you'd probably call it a happy accident almost when, so certainly when I was first introduced to Premier, we used to buy Premier and have stock left over. Whereas actually now we're consciously buying from all over the world wines that are young, that we lay down here, um, age, and then assess with your expertise and say, these are absolutely ready to drink. So this is a perfect example of a museum release. Bought it young, aged it, and now it's drinking perfectly. I think it, it offers so many opportunities. I and mean, I touched earlier on the fact that it allows you to try a wine that you might have already bought, see how it's getting on. Mm. But if you're new to wine, you're not sure whether you want to actually get involved in the whole buying on primeur process, yeah. you can try a wine that's got a bit of bottle age and it just gives you that exactly. opportunity to yeah. see what potential there is in store. And we as the wine side to do the work for you because we store it in perfect conditions um, and Absolutely. then release it when it's ready. I think we're so lucky that our predecessors actually had the foresight to uh, to have enough space, to have the right conditions, mm -hmm. that we can then lay wines down and offer them later when they're ready for drinking. To members benefit. Absolutely, we all benefit. This is so delicious. Cheers. Looking good, cheers. <laughs>